All right, we're live. Hey, Kyle, welcome. Thanks for coming on, man. How you doing? Good, man. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Hey, so me and Kyle, we're coming on. We're, we're coming on to talk about crypto culture and uh, some what's wrong with it, right? Because uh, it's a little bit delusional. Um, not everybody, but people have different opinions. Uh, but there's this mindset, and uh, Kyle, ha Kyle and I had a little back and forth with a guy on Twitter that we're going to use an example because I keep seeing the same talking points about Bitcoin is number one, Bitcoin is king, Bitcoin will never be unseated. If Bitcoin is no longer number one, the Bitcoin fails. And it's just not true. It's just not true. Um, you can't. <laughs> I don't know, man. What do you, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Kyle. Uh, you made your thoughts well known on Twitter. <laughs> I'll screen share that so people yeah. can see an example. <laughs> so let yeah, me I got a little patience for that type of uh, perspective. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's 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 kind of like a stuck on stupid mentality. Like like you have to think this way when you're indoctrinated into crypto. And if you don't think like this, then you're wrong. <laughs> I'm welcome to all kinds of opinions. I'm not saying the the person in this example is wrong. There's just so many people on crypto Twitter who are saying that if Bitcoin is not number one, the Bitcoin failed is, is what they're trying to say, right? You know, Bitcoin will eventually be well, unseen. Well, Go ahead. Yeah, to clarify, what they're saying is if Bitcoin isn't number one, then no other coin can succeed. And and that's just preposterous. It's insane. It is. Um, you know, we're moving into a state where it's about users, you know? It is. And it's also about us usability. And uh, it's also about free thinking and decentralization. Right now, Bitcoin is run by an oligarchy. It's run by an oligarchy. All right. And I, I'm going to here, I'll show you the example Kyle and I are talking about. I'll give you a quick rundown and then we'll leave it go. It's just an example. It's just an example. Please don't get wrapped around that axle. But I've just seen this uh, debate so many times and I just go, wow, why do people think like that? And it just doesn't make sense. So the only way to correct it is or is to provide other opinions or the only way to bring things back into balance is to provide more in various opinions. because There's a big ocean out there. All right, so let me screen share this out as an example. So it started off with uh, yesterday I tweeted out, we are going for number one. And y'all know I'm a big Cardano fan, and I'm not uh, the enemy of, of Tezos. I actually think there are other cryptos like Tezos, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Ethereum 2.0, uh, Stellar. There's all these other great crypto projects out there that can be number one and should be competing for number one. And as you can see in my example here, and you'll see Kyle and I's discussion. So we'll, we'll review over this, and then we'll get back to the whole point of what we're trying to talk about. But I said, we're going for number one. Well, this huge crypto account, Coin Think Tank, with 22,600 followers, um, obviously been in, in crypto for quite some time, uh, goes on to say, good goal, but you know, number one is king. It'll be difficult to unseat. Number two is realistic. Well, it's not realistic to think that Bitcoin will always be number one just like thinking that America Online Internet service in the 1990s would always be number one. It, it's just not realistic to look at it that way. And of course, my reply is no football coach ever said, we are going for number two, boys. No one ever started building a project. No visionary ever launched their project by saying, hey, we're going to be number two, right? Maybe the Cleveland Browns did every football season. They come out and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to go all the way to the Super Bowl, and then we're going to get beat by the New England Patriots. <laughs> they, you just don't do that. That's not how you start a project off. So uh, Mr. Coin Think Tank, and again, I'm not beating up on this guy. This is just their opinion, but the point is I have seen this debate play out over and over and over again on Twitter over the past couple of years where – the Bitcoin maxis are just like, Bitcoin is the number one, and if it's not number one, then Bitcoin failed. It's just not true. And so we just go on to say, you know, uh, he goes on to say, I'd love to see Cardano as number one, but not realistic, etc. And I'm saying, saying Bitcoin is king and another technology likely cannot be number one, does not sound very decentralized. Bitcoin does not have to go down in market cap for another coin to surpass it. It's like saying iPhone sales could never pass up Nokia 15 years ago. Okay, which has happened. 
you know, and it, so of course the discussion just goes on and on here, um, just back and forth on Twitter. But it's it's happened over and over again. And and Kyle has his comments here that he can speak to. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, but that's just uh, what we wanted to talk about is, you know, where does that come from? I'm going to drop the screen share. Anything you want to hit on there, Kyle? Um, yeah, no, it's just a, it's an example of, um, you know, I don't want to say a lack of education because, you know, we're dealing with people who have been in the crypto space for some time, but to what depth are these individuals, you know, um, technologists or students of disruption? You know, you've got a, okay, that's great. People can have opinions that this is going to be the best, but you lend a great example when you're talking about, you know, disruption and, and how incumbents, the, the first comers, first movers, aren't necessarily the, the, the winners, you know, and in the spirit of Independence Day, what did the British think? Did they think we were going to be a superpower in 1776, you know, the world leading power? Absolutely not. But, you know, I mean, good, stuff man. happens. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, so that's a good Just look at over the course of history and technology and how to develop. For example, I've used this example before. The Wright brothers invented the airplane. It was the very first airplane. The airplane they invented was made out of wood. It practically had a lawnmower engine to propel it. The propeller was made out of wood. Do you see Delta Airlines out there flying airplanes that are made out of wood? No. Absolutely yep. not. They took the model and they innovated it. That's right. And, and they made it better, and they improved. And, and saying that, you know, you got to make all airplanes out of wood forever and ever and ever is just wrong thinking. It just, it's just not true. And the same thing goes for Bitcoin. I'll give you an example, like Bitcoin Cash. So Bitcoin Cash has some improvements over Bitcoin where and I'm not a big Bitcoin Cash holder. I got one, okay? So I'm not like pimping Bitcoin Cash here. All right. They made an improvement where they have higher transactions per second. So it's exactly the same thing as Bitcoin, yet faster. What was the biggest problem with Bitcoin during the last bull run? Biggest problem with Bitcoin during the last bull run is transactions took a day and a half because it bogged down. It, it, the technology hit its limit. It's limited to about five, five and a half transactions per second. And, and there you are. You're stuck. So uh, we're, we're trying to look at the big picture here, right? Um, I, and I gave the Nokia and iPhone example. Here's another example. It, people go on to say, just like this person coined Think Tank, but there are plenty of other people with this same mentality. It's like saying, okay, Volkswagen is the number one automobile manufacturer. If Volkswagen fails, the entire auto industry fails. It's, it's just not true. Toyota's right there at number two. They'll just take the spot and run with it. And the automobile industry will be just fine. But, you know, it's the old gangsters and it's the exchanges that drive this dialogue and they drive this mentality and they indoctrinate people into crypto with propaganda to make them think that Bitcoin has to remain number one. Meanwhile, it is like an inferior technology compared to other technologies, if you know what I'm saying. So it's a form of propaganda and indoctrination to make people think that Bitcoin has to stay number one. And it's just not true. And that was the main point we wanted to get to here today. So we got to it pretty quick, huh, Kyle? <laughs> I don't. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's kind of it. I mean, there's so many other examples. I mean, you look at Friendster; they're the first social network. If they understood and management understood how to scale, there would be no MySpace or Facebook, right? That yeah. that that chain wouldn't have happened. It was an opportunity, but it, you know, obviously, it was a mismanagement. If anybody knows the history of that, but. Um, that this this whole mindset that you know bitcoin is going to be king is i mean when you understand what's happening with with smart contracts and incentive to incentive tokenization and the types of uh peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces that some of these newer technologies are going to enable um and obviously the decentralization and security it's it's mind-blowing for you know me, you know, I, I study disruption. It's kind of, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur. It's my sole source of income or the things I do on that realm. And, and so, you know, when I'm looking at technologies, it's, uh, th it's layered. There's a lot of things happening, but the one thing is certain and that's disruptions exponential. And to say Bitcoin will not be disrupted is, it's, I think it's silly. Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's a defeatist approach. 
And uh, I used the Bitcoin Cash example, like Ethereum is always number two. Why? Because the Ethereum oligarchy, the gateway drugs to crypto currently that's promoted by the exchanges is you got to get there from by buying Bitcoin first to trade into it or buying Ethereum first and trading into it or buying XRP or buying USDT and trading into it. Who are the top four? Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT. And uh, but are they the best technologies? They're not. They're not the best technologies. They have their flaws. The whole thing, like, and so they use, well, and it, to stay on that point is the exchanges use that as the gateway drug to get newcomers in. And the OGs use the newcomers as pump and dump to enrich themselves, right? Is not everyone, but in general, that's what happens in crypto. And you're not going to build a strong ecosystem with that kind of approach. You're not going to take over or, or you're not going to coexist with, uh, with fiat with that kind of approach so there has to be a paradigm shift and it's already occurring there's already a lot of cryptocurrency there's a lot of exchanges that offer direct buy where you can purchase a cryptocurrency directly with fiat you can pay cash to buy ada and there's what coinbase has like 13 listings now 12 or 13 listings mm -hmm. on there so you have a direct pathway the change is already there it's already in effect it's just a matter of do you accept it or not? Or are you stuck on stupid? I mean, that just, I got to call well, it like I it think, is, man. This is a no bullshit channel. We ain't I, fucking around. <laughs> you know, I get it. I get it. I think that some people, though, they're, they're visual learners. And, you know, it's really hard for a lot of people to grasp some of these technical concepts and the applications that they're going to unlock for the world. And so uh, on that note, um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is uh, – as dApps come into fruition, people are going to see the use cases of these. And they've been limited in the past uh, by protocol architectures, you know, technical deficiencies. And you know, I'm a firm believer that the, the dApp wars are ultimately going to decide the protocol wars because that's what's going to bring in users, right? And so that's kind of, you know, as dApps start to acquire users on, on their target protocols, um, there's going to be a less visibility into the crypto transactional space and, and people will start to see this. I mean, there's going to be a killer dApp that becomes mainstream that users, they're not really terribly familiar with the crypto backend. And I think in, in, in that regard, you're going to see a, a lot of actual shift in mentality yeah. um, because the influx of users that's going to come into this space, they're totally going to, to, to um, oversaturate the existing users in the space. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, but along with DApps, I mean, that's another complexity to crypto that people need to wrap their heads around. It's DApp is simply an app. It's just an app that uses crypto to interact. Okay, whatever that is, and and that will be another another step in the right direction. There's some folks in the chat. Hi, everyone there in chat. Hello, Chris Ray. Good to see you. Uh, Kello Crypto, Darren Hag. Good to see everyone. Brian Penley, welcome. DK, uh, good to see you there. Kristen Weiberg, hello, welcome. Uh, yeah, and Kristen notes that Kristen notes that uh, you're only looking at the tech. There's more to it. Yeah, I understand. There's more to it. I agree. There is more to it. And I'll give you an example. Um, let's let's go back to the the culture of crypto and the indoctrination and the propaganda. And that is um, so all the old all the OGs in crypto they hold Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the king. They invest a lot of money in Bitcoin, so they want it to win and they keep it winning. But a better technology comes along. Bitcoin Cash innovates. They make it faster. And then they get kicked to the curb because the oligarchy doesn't agree with it. That doesn't sound very decentralized to me. All right. Bitcoin started off as peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. That was the whole point. Peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. They no longer say that. Why? Because it no longer exactly works as peer-to-peer -peer digital currency. Most of the trading going on on Bitcoin and apps and dApps or whatever it is, it is with bots. It's not people. It's not people using it for functionality. It's not people uh -huh. using it for services. It's just bots ping-ponging little bits of data back and forth to each other, and it makes it look like their activity. Meanwhile, 70% of the Bitcoin is dormant. It's dormant. It's just sitting there like a lump, like a lump of gold. And I hear that. You hear that argument on, on Twitter, uh, Kyle, that uh, Bitcoin is the gold and everything else is the silver and the bronze. And uh, No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry. Gold has it, functionality. It, <laughs> And Bitcoin kind of doesn't have functionality. I might got a gold tooth right there, man. I got a gold tooth. I got gold in my it's computer. It's a simplistic here. view. It is. It's a simplistic you view. You know, it's a simplistic view. 
It doesn't fly in my book. I've always learned to question things. Don't just swallow the propaganda. Just look at it and say, why is that? When you look under the hood, you, you just got to say, okay, Bitcoin's okay. It's still successful. Don't get me wrong. Bitcoin has succeeded. It, but it has not brought crypto into the mainstream. It's still less than 1% of the users out there. Less than 1% of the population uh, even knows about Bitcoin or uses Bitcoin. Uses Bitcoin. Um, what is it? Run? It's right now. It's running at about 60 terawatt hours per year on less than 1% of the population interacting with it. 60 terawatt hours. That's unsustainable. Five transactions per second. Well, there's, se there's 7 billion people on planet earth. <laughs> what are you going to do with five transactions per second and 7 billion people on planet earth? 7.7 7 billion. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? It's a big ocean, guys. The ocean is gigantic. It's massive. And and Bitcoin is not going to get us there. It's like saying the guy that invented the canoe also invented the ocean liner. I'm sorry, but a canoe is not an air ocean liner. I know I keep giving these examples, but it's just true. I mean, it's just the way it is. Ethereum Classic is a better protocol, in my opinion, than Ethereum. It's more immutable. But who's on top? Ethereum's on top. Why? Because the oligarchy of Ethereum says Ethereum's going to be on top. <laughs> the exchanges say... Well, well, well techni <laughs> yeah, technicalities aside, marketing goes a long way. You know, um, the best technology doesn't always win. So that that's something that's worth saying. So, you know, we've got to look at it objectively in that sense. Mm -hmm. You take a step back, though, you know, what marketing engine does Bitcoin have moving forward compared to other initiatives? You know, I hate to, you know, I'm not one to bash other projects, but I mean, Tron, I think the only reason they're successful is they've got a marketing angle, you know, it, at least successful to whatever degree they have been. And so that's going to play a big part moving forward. And by enabling dApps in the sense, and, and you know, I'm thinking crazy peer to peer marketplaces, you know, like um, think about IoT uh, 3D printers, right? where individuals similar to Amazon ecosystem can create designs, users can buy them peer to peer, guarantee single prints. You're opening up a, a widespread market of new markets, but these individual dApps and their ecosystems and communities are going to drive marketing that's going to all funnel back into the core protocol. That's right. So you've got that angle to consider as well. Yep. And marketing does go a very long way, even in a decentralized state, you know, anyone can market to take, Take a use case for Bitcoin or Ethereum or Bitcoin Cash or Tron or whatever it is. And Tron's a good example where, I mean, that's a clone of Ethereum from what I understand, at least at the core, the base of it is is basically Ethereum. Mm. Massive uh, marketing campaign, massive marketing onslaught, and they did well. You know, they went somewhere with it. Maybe it didn't hold. It doesn't, it doesn't stand the test of time, maybe. <clears throat> but the marketing does take it. That. Yeah, it does, it does take it quite a long way. And, uh, you know, I think what Kyle and I are getting, I don't know if you agree with me or not, Kyle, but um, it's okay. I mean, everybody's got their own opinion and they're all, they all smell the same. Uh, but if you, uh, uh, shit, I lost my train of thought, what I was going to say about that. If <laughs> It happens. I'm tired, bro. <laughs> but happy Independence yeah, Day. Yeah, man. Right? But, yeah. <laughs> If, if you just look at the big picture of cryptocurrencies is that Bitcoin doesn't have to fail just because it's not number one, just because the technology is not still sitting at one and it goes to number two or number three doesn't mean it failed. It's still already succeeded and that's the key point there and other things can replace it. Other things can pass it up and it still serves its purpose, um, you know, and it, it needs to happen. The, tech, the technologies need to occur. Well, the marketing needs to occur. The value needs to set into it if for it to be successful. It's really hard to have a newcomer come into cryptocurrencies and say, you can buy one Bitcoin for $10,000. They're going to look at you and say, what? No way. I can buy a car for $10,000. Or they say, you can, you can start investing in Bitcoin by buying 0. .0001 Bitcoin with your weekly paycheck savings of a hundred dollars <laughs> they're not gonna do it <laughs> they're not gonna do it so well, i also think too uh a core premise of the post the social media post that kind of uh ignited this conversation 
was along the lines of not necessarily um, Bitcoin, uh, whether or not it's going to succeed or not, but it was more if Bitcoin falls, everything else falls. Everything's dependent on Bitcoin. And, and, you know, and my comments in that realm is, okay, yeah, right now, that's just because I think most people are just not able to assess the technology really in depth and understand the disruption capabilities of some of the things that are out there. But I totally disagree with with that. I mean, at some point, Bitcoin could go to zero. And do you think there will be no other coins out there? That's insane. It's that's an insane process. Yeah, um, and, there's a lot I of don't, innovation that's happening, and a lot of yeah. And I, I don't think Bitcoin is going to fall. I think it's going to sustain itself. I just also think something will pass it up. And again, just because it's not number one does not mean that it failed. If it drops to number two, three, four, five, it's probably going to go somewhere. It's going to go where it belongs, right? And I know people say, well, there's billions of dollars invested in it. Yeah, I totally get that. There were billions of dollars invested in Nokia. Now, good luck buying one. <laughs> You're going to buy an iPhone or Samsung what, what, or an HTC or an LG. <laughs> what about Iridium, right? That satellite cell phone network, right? Yeah. Back in the day. There was. Wh- what about flop. that? Tell me more about that. I don't know much about that. What happened with um, that? I got to think back. Uh, Iridium. Iridium was a very large uh, initiative. I'm not sure. I think it was maybe in the 90s, um, if I recall. But it was basically satellite phone internet, satellite phones, right? Cell phones with satellite. Mm -hmm. Slow, expensive, and then then cellular just took over. And it totally just, you know, these guys blew and lost all all this money. Their vision was, okay, they had great tech. They, They were kind of incumbents in the space. Slow, clunky costly and then they were disrupted by by mainstream you know it never went mainstream so that's just another example of of um disruption in that regard yeah no it is and you know they probably also figured out what happens when you hold a cell- satellite transmitter right next to your head it probably fries your brain so that that's not good either There's i mean a, short term you might be okay may, but long term may, <laughs> yeah may, it, maybe but there's a book i Oh, there was a book I read. I think it's called Why Smart Executives Fail. And there's a whole chapter dedicated to the Iridium um, uh, fiasco, if, if you guys want to check that out. Yeah. And, you know, there, there's also there's other writings on group think. And I think crypto culture also suffers from a form of group think, like when when mass adoption and crypto will be successful when mass adoption. But it's what does mass adoption look like? We don't know. But if, if you don't know what groupthink is, go ahead and look it up on the internet. The best example you'll find was the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster and the Space Shuttle Challenger uh, explosion. It, they figured out, they went back to figure out why did this occur, and they figured out groupthink allowed it to occur. They knew of that problem before the Space Shuttle went up. But because everybody had a certain mindset and everybody was thinking the same way and everybody was thinking they group think took over and it allowed them to launch that space shuttle with no a known faulty o-ring and when it launched it blew up just like a few of the folks said yeah that's bad you shouldn't launch it with that o-ring in there and it blew up and then they looked back and said yeah some people knew why did we launch with that o-ring the group think and groupthink happens, and you see it on crypto Twitter because the most pri- the primary form of communications in crypto is crypto Twitter, and secondary is Telegram. Twitter is more of a broadcast, you know, it gets smattered everywhere. Telegram is a little yeah. bit more isolated, not isolated, but it's a little more organized. Um, but groupthink can still occur, and I know Cardano might not be the ultimate technology. I'm betting on that horse because I think it could be. But I also am aware that there are other technologies that are also good, right? And it's just fair to give credit where credit is due. And I think in the long term, if these cryptocurrencies can work together, then they'll all be better off long term. Just like if Toyota competing with Volkswagen is a benefit to all of us. You get a better Toyota, you get a better Volkswagen. If, if no one can ever beat Bitcoin, and Bitcoin must always be number one, that is a failed system. It's already failed because the herd mentality and the group think will crush it. Uh, but the paradigm shift is already occurring, and I think some of the exchanges are recognizing it. I think some of the OGs, some of the old gangsters who are part of the oligarchy of Bitcoin, 
are also starting to recognize it. They're probably starting to diversify. And it doesn't mean it's going to happen soon. This isn't like tomorrow, not like when Coinbase next month, right? I'm talking over the next two, three, four years, you're going to see this paradigm shift to where the better coins will start moving into position into number one or number one position. And, and you'll start to see a shift in the one, in top one, two, and three. Because they can't just sit there on that old technology and be fat, dumb, and happy. Because it's the fat cats. The fat cats are running the Bitcoin. I'm not making fun of them. I'm just calling it what it is. The fat cats are running the Bitcoin. Yay. Good for you, fat cat. Um, you made your money. Good for you. There's better technology coming. <laughs> it's going to supplant the current uh, technology and the current paradigms. Well, you know, and on that note, um, you know, kind of the reasons I, I was attracted to Cardano, um, you know, when I was younger, I, I sold for Intel for five years, the embedded division, that's everything but PCs. And doing that job, you know, I engaged customers and it was basically facilitating the entire engagement. So in doing that, you know, I saw guys building dog collars, you know, all the way from customers building missiles. And the range of expertise was so vast, you know, my task was to go and find opportunities to play silicon. And so in doing that process, you know, uh, I'd come across underdogs that were just, you know, guys that were trying to make something out of nothing. And when I looked at that, I said, okay, there's three things I look for. You've got to have technical excellence. You've got to have good business, you know, sensor leadership, and you've got to be funded. And if they had two out of three of those things, I'd work with them because the other would come. And then, you know, I, I think it was Charles Whiteboard that it floored me. And then I just j dove into, into that. And, and, and that initiative, IOHK, with what they're bringing to the table, it's unparalleled in many senses in the crypto space. The methodology, the process, the, the, the approaches and the tact. And from my perspective, that's, uh, that's what brought, you know, uh, my, my attention full scale to Cardano. Yeah, me too. That one, uh, that was uh, one of the primary things. Oh, and that was something that it came up in that in that Twitter thread is that that person, uh, Coin Think Tank, said, "Oh, if you if you think I'm wrong or something to that effect, uh, ask Charles what he thinks about your opinion, dude. I don't have to ask Charles. He he doesn't want me to ask him that kind of stuff. He wants you to think for yourself. He said it over and over and over again. Think for yourself. Think for yourself." That's that's like, uh, what is that? That's a king mentality thing. Oh, I think you're wrong. Why don't you go ask your king if you are right? I don't have to ask my king. I got my own fucking opinion, and I'm going to say it. I might be wrong, or you might not like my opinion. I like chocolate. You like vanilla. Oh, freaking well. At least I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to put it out there. Uh, and that helps, the, that helps when everybody gets out there. You know, in... YouTube is a big ocean, Twitter is a big ocean, crypto is a big ocean, and that's why Kyle and I can come on here on Independence Day and have this kind of conversation, and we don't have to think like the status quo, we don't have to be orthodox, he can have a different opinion from me, and we can still sit here and bullshit, right? And it's a great way. The only world. thing constant is change. Yeah. Yep. And sometimes change takes a while. Change. Uh, I've read uh, from Ken Blanchard, I think it was, one of Ken Blanchard's books. Change takes 20 years. Bitcoin's been around for 10. Change takes 20 years. It, and, you know, Bitcoin yeah, we're has... We're way early. Yeah, you're, it's still early. It's, it's a long game. This is a long game. Short game is... You know what? Another thing in, in crypto culture that trips me out is uh, traders... When they say they're 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 going to take profit, what does take profit mean? You think about that. What does that mean? That means they're going to trade their crypto for fiat and they trade back to fiat. And so that's another type of think that is not let, not always let, good for crypto. Let's get let's get this straight. <laughs> All right, and you guys can yell at me for this opinion. But I'm going to state it. I think traders are the absolute bottom of the barrel in our ecosystem. They're the least educated, the least informed, and the least helpful, to be honest with you, in regards to um, adoption. Sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> I have a similar opinion, maybe not that extreme, but I do say, you know, 
<laughs> trading helps balance it. At least it keeps it moving. But you know, as long as it's not artificial movement. But when when your idea of take profit is to sell the crypto off into fiat, and then buy back in at a lower price, and then you you set aside the ten percent fiat gains you made. You buy back the crypto that you own. That crypt that fiat that you earned had to come from somewhere. It came from a new guy or came from a a dum dum that doesn't know the game as well as you do, and you beat them at the game. And that's what Bitcoin does. Is you got whales out there who are whaling at each other, trying to suck money out of the other whales. And while they're at it, the collateral damages. The little people are like, "Hey, I want to get involved. How does that Bitcoin thing work?" Then they get burned because I know people who said, "Oh yeah, I tried Bitcoin once. I bought eight hundred. I bought eight hundred dollars worth. I got a half a Bitcoin for eight hundred dollars, and then I lost five hundred dollars. So I sold it, and I'm never going to touch it again." <laughs> That's their impression of Bitcoin. <laughs> You think well, that and, guy's coming and that back? The game's going to change. <laughs> yeah, the game's going to change. You know, think of it as the dot com startup days, right? You had a whole bunch of crap out there, you know, like what pets dot com and just ridiculous things that everybody thought was just going to be amazing. And what's happened now? Some of them survived. Some of them. That's yeah. what's going to happen in crypto. Some of some of the guys standing today are going to survive. The majority will not. So a lot of the traders that are playing the game, they're going to get bit. And, and so anybody in my perspective that's talking about price right now, the, sorry, you know, you, you lose a lot of credibility in my book right there. Yeah, it does. It does a little bit. Some of the traders are really good, um, it, but it's few and far between. Most of the traders are start, they're, they're They're being a little more realistic about it lately. There, I, I actually see a lot of traders saying, yeah, 90% of traders are going to lose money. I think it's about a 50-50 game. When you got traders playing against traders, if 50% of them make money, that means the other 50% lost money. But you still have to have more right. traders trying to play that game. It's kind of like gambling. You know? You're trying to make your moves at the right time. So it has a, it has a little bit of detriment too, but it also has some positive... Uh, uh, impact on the market, kind of like putting fertilizer in your garden. You got to kind of put some poop out there to grow the plants. <laughs> you know a lot about that, don't you, Kyle? I'm going to check a little, chat. Little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know a little bit about that. It doesn't have to do with your Doja project, too, I think. All right, so I'll hit chat for a little bit. Minister C. Politics says, hey, it's old gangsta. It's not original gangsta. Yeah, I've heard it called old, old, old gangster, original guys, original gangsters. OG has a couple different meaning, a couple different names, but has the same meaning. The ones that have been there for a while. If any, anybody got questions, inputs, let us know in the chat if you want to uh, provide some inputs there. Uh, Brian Penley says, traders work against time, investors work with and uses time. Yeah, traders, investors are good. Investors are good. Utility is also good. You want to have a balance. You want to have... So, some amount of traders, you don't want the whole market driven by traders and bots. That's not a healthy market. You want to have some investors, some traders. You don't need bots, but I guess pe you, people use bots to win the game, right? And then you want to have usefulness. And that will come with time. When crypto is easy, as easy to use as regular fiat, you just take 10 seconds, you walk up to the convenience store, and you use it like a credit card, quick swipe. You're not worried about people stealing your keys. That's when crypto is going to make a bigger impact. It's going to be hard to do with Bitcoin. I mean, there's a lot of technology involved in Bitcoin. Credit where credit is due. But the technology is limited. And every time someone tries to innovate it, it gets held back by the OGs <laughs> and the exchanges. So, yeah. All right. I don't see uh, any questions in chat. Let me know. What else, Kyle, man? It was a good Independence Day. Beautiful out here. You're not too far away. You're only about, what, 150 miles uh, southwest of where I'm at. I'm in Virginia. I'm up by the coast. Where in Virginia are you? Okay, I'm, I was I was in Suffolk just the other day by Virginia Beach. Oh, shoot. I'm in Hampton Roads area. My, I drive through Suffolk when I go to my office. Oh, wow. Okay, Suffolk, we're close. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're not far away. You're, are you near the border of North Carolina? Yeah, I'm, I'm about 10 minutes from the Virginia border. Oh, snap. My, my buddy goes down there to buy cigarettes. He just drives across the border from Chesapeake because of the uh, there's no tax or it's lower tax. And North Carolina is a huge tobacco capital or 
big growing industry yeah. down there. So you get them real cheap. Like 10 bucks a carton difference or something like that. There's a big difference. Yeah, I mean, I bought a pack in uh, Virginia, and it was, I think, a dollar more expensive. Yeah, and Virginia's still pretty cheap as it is. When I buy my I buy my cigars, I like those acid cigars. Um, I think it's Nicaraguan. And when I get them in Virginia, they have to compete with the Virginia market, and uh, they're like six ninety five here, but in California they're ten bucks. <laughs> it's a big difference. Yeah, so is there anything else you want to talk about while we're here? Is there any anybody in the chat want to cover anything? Um, yeah, we'll, we could see if anyone in chat, anyone got anything to say? Uh, Chris Ray says, how can crypto be removed from Wall Street manipulation in your opinion? Oh, I don't, wow. That's, I don't know. You know, you know who could answer that is, um, Pompliano, Anthony Pompliano, maybe not removed from Wall Street manipulation, but he's the kind of guy who could, uh, introduce it to Wall Street manipulation in order to gain value because <laughs> he knows how that stuff works. If you ever seen Anthony Pompliano's, uh, podcast he's a pretty smart guy so how could it be removed from wall street manipula manipulation you can't i don't think you can i think if wall street wanted to play the game uh it, it would be a benefit to those of us who are early because you would see a probably see an increase in price but then the whale wars would move from the internet to wall street on the internet so i think it'd be pretty interesting to see that happen but I'm not a financial expert. We never do financial advice on Digital Fortress, so I can't really speak to it that much more. Okay. All right. So I think we got our piece out there. Uh, this was going to be a brief video. We just wanted to talk, talk briefly on Independence Day and talk about free speech and opinions and different, think different, try to think outside the box, you know. I'm not trying to tell you how to think. I'm saying form your own opinion. Look at these different technologies and how they're used why they're used, what they provide, and uh, try not to fall into the slump of, of this is how we think because that's, what, that's how they told me to think. Here, I got an example for you, Kyle. Check this out, man. This is funny. Okay. This is an old story. Fire. This is about, this is about a culture. All right. Let's say you have a zoo. You got a bunch of monkeys in, in a cage in a zoo, and they live in there. It's a pretty nice little habitat. But to keep the monkeys from getting out of their habitat, there's a ladder that goes up to where the zookeeper comes over to feed them and take care of them and stuff. But every time a monkey tries to climb up that ladder, the zookeeper sprays them with the water hose. Get off the ladder, right? So the first wave of monkeys, the monkeys that live there, they know if you try to climb up the ladder, the zookeeper is going to spray you with the hose. So they stop climbing up the ladder. So new monkeys come along, and some of the old, old monkeys, they go on their way, and they, you know, they, they die or whatever, and then, then there's new monkeys. So the new monkeys come in, and the old monkeys tell the new monkeys, hey, don't climb up that ladder, or he's going to spray you with the garden hose. He's going to spray you with that hose. Don't climb up there. And the new monkeys say, okay, I'm not going to climb up there because the old monkey told me don't climb up there. Okay, so time goes on, and eventually all the old monkeys die off, and all new monkeys came in, and now all the new monkeys tell the other new monkeys, hey, don't climb up that ladder, because if you climb up that ladder, he's going to spray you with the garden hose. So now you have an entire group of new monkeys, all new monkeys, none of them ever got sprayed with the garden hose, ever. But they still don't climb up that ladder, because they're telling each other, don't climb up the ladder, you get sprayed with the garden hose. Well, I'm here to tell you, Climb that ladder. And if you get sprayed with a garden hose, who gives a shit? Take it away from the zookeeper and spray him back. <laughs> That's Independence Day for you, bro. <laughs> All right, Kyle, you want to wrap it up on that note? Um, Yeah, on that note, I say all you developers out there, give those monkeys a toy and they'll play with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Developers like to develop. That's why they're called developers. If developers like to be stagnant, they would be called stagnants, but they're not. They're called developers. <laughs> Don't worry, Cardano, the, the Gogan gets out there, Voltaire, all these technologies get out there. Developers are going to show up. Developers are going to come to Cardano. They like, they like new stuff. They like to play with new toys. 
developers are not stuck on stupid. They're not stuck with Solidity. I saw a Solidity developer. I don't know. I don't remember the exact context, but to do division in that language, it takes like 17 lines of code to divide the number by another number. That's not going to work. <laughs> and you, you don't have smart contracts on Bitcoin. So I don't know what you're going to develop on that. Well, well, yeah, on that note, and I saw a question, you know, maybe thoughts on the summit uh, to tie that in. You know, Charles announced um, Cardano Fund for developers to who are looking at um, building DeFi applications as well as dApps. Um, they, they're working and looking at enabling that with a fund. So that's uh, pretty interesting. If you guys didn't catch Charles's keynote, definitely check that out. Yeah. Do you, do you have any more details on that? Like, how much is the fund? Uh, how's that going to be divvied out? Is it going to be voted on by Voltaire? Um, is that um, a, I, there's, I saw there's two companies. I, what, I missed that. So, yeah, if you want to fill me in on here, details. Here's, here's what I, yeah, here's what I know. Charles says right now, IOHK is funding 10 million of that. And, and, I, and, and the investment firm that they're working with, uh, the name escapes me right now. I believe they're going to invest another 10 million gradually on top of that but the initial you know there's going to be a, a portal i think that's set up but for now charles just said send a proposal to invest at iohk.io beautiful so if you guys have something you want to build and it's cool give it a shot you should do that with the doja man i don't know if you did don't say nothing oh yeah definitely <laughs> you should yeah, do that's that cool. that's cool i'm putting it i gotta write a new uh, yeah i'm going to i've got to get a new white paper out there i'm kind of I learned a lot from Cardano uh, in regards to incentivization and in, in, in that regard. So I'm kind of tweaking that model and I'll throw something out there for everybody to criticize. But I'm kind of looking for, um, you know, just kind of really use that as a basis to start putting a team together and kind of go back for round two. Cool. Nice, man. And, you know, don't forget about the, uh, you know, the ITN as we ran that, the Treasury collected over 100 million ADA in it. That's $10 million worth of ADA at today's rates. By the time you have Voltaire, it might might be something higher than $10 million. Could be lower. I don't know. Not financial advice. But that's $100 million ADA. And I don't care what the dollar price is. That's a lot of ADA. And it's going to end up in the treasury. Yeah. And that's going to go to developers. Yeah. That's going to go to developers. And it's a decentralized treasury where people are going to be able to vote. And, and guys, don't, don't forget... Staking and voting are two separate things. If you you stake to a pool, doesn't mean that pool gets your vote. That's not how it works. Like when just because I put my money in Bank of America doesn't mean Bank of America gets to vote for me. Cardano did it the same way. Cardano did it right. So when you delegate your money to a pool, that's simply the pool you're where you're getting interest on your ADA. Okay. You still own your vote. Two separate processes. You own your vote. And if you want... That's right. It's not... Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Kyle. It's not like Steam where... It's not It's not like Steam where the node operators are voting on your behalf. You know, you vote on, on your own behalf. And, you know, so you, your delegation power is not your voting power. It's not your spending power. Yes. Two totally separate functions. And you can even delegate your vote. There's going to be experts coming out, okay? That could be Kyle. That could be anyone. It could be Philippe. It could be Mark Stopka. It could be uh, Papa Carp. It could be Andrew Westberg over there at Blue Cheese. Those folks can run as experts, and you can delegate your vote to them and say, you know what, I agree with Papa Carp, or I agree with Kyle Solomon, and I don't have time to read every proposal, or I don't understand every proposal, so I'm going to delegate my vote to that person. I'm going to say, look, you can vote on my behalf, and you can delegate to one person over there for your vote, and you can delegate to a pool for your stake, and it's two completely separate actions, and that is amazing right there. Wicked cool. <laughs> Absolutely, man. All right. Hey, let's end out on a positive note. This was supposed to be this. This was a positive discussion talking about changing the culture, moving forward in crypto. Don't get stuck on stupid. Anything you want to add, Cal? Before we wrap up, uh, think for yourself. Be independent. Be innovative. Be an entrepreneur. Question or, everything. Independence Day. <laughs> don't get stuck in that mindset. Just don't get stuck. 
unless you want, unless you're happy being stuck in the matrix, living inside the little bubble, right? You know, you want to be in the matrix in a little bubble. And you just, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> ignorance is bliss. That's not what crypto is about. Crypto is about thinking for yourself and doing the right thing and doing your own thing, really, is what it is. All right, buddy. Hey, you, you good for the day? You going to go watch fireworks? Yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, yeah, I got a whole bunch. I'm out here in the boonies. We'll light them up when it gets dark. Yeah. Oh, I should have gone. I should have gone south of the border and got me some fireworks, man. I should have thought of that. Oh, way. I, I spent way too much money going south. Way too much. <laughs> yeah, but you'll have fun out there in the boonies lighting them fireworks. All right, Kyle. Hey, thanks for coming on Digital Fortress. Thanks for a good talk. And and these these kind of discussions will continue across many different YouTube channels. You know, about moving forward and and don't get stuck in that paradigm of. Bitcoin is king, and okay, whatever. <laughs> All right. Okay. Happy Fourth of July. Appreciate you having me, Rick. You bet, brother. You bet. Anytime. Anyone else wants to come on Digital Fortress, drop me a note in Telegram, say hi, and you can join me and Kyle here. Come on with anybody else, and we'll talk about whatever you want.